Hi, I'm live, I think, on both the IOD page and my own Liza Jane Designs page. I think it is just about 11 o'clock, so hopefully some people will join us. It's really, really helpful if you say hello and tell us where you're from, and it lets Facebook and me know that you're seeing and you're liking or you you have questions, please ask them. But just, you know, come on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm broadcasting today using um, my laptop and my phone and StreamYard. So I'm sending this at the same time, I think, to IOD and to my page, Liza Jane Designs, and also to my YouTube channel. So it's amazing what technology can do. So today, here in my house, my husband is gonna be watching for greetings and questions. Um, and we're going to be, if I can raise that up and bring it over here, can't see me and it. So we're going to be playing around with the Cotswold pig, the charcuterie um, transfer. And I want to show you ways to add color that I think are fun ways to do that job. So I'm Liz from Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. If you are watching and you have a local stockist, you know how to reach that person. If you do not have a local stockist, uh, check out the IOD website. And there's a resource there that you can find the stockist closest to you. So we're going to focus down here today. Um, and I've got the Cotswold transfer that's one of the latest release and I decided that I want to use the four elements here that are from Cotswold that make up the Gloucestershire Old Spot Eatery Charcuterie and I think most of us understand the basics of using a transfer but if you haven't used them yet the basics involve um, painting or somehow prepping a, a substrate. It could be plastic or wood or glass. And the ways that you prep it, you know, vary. But transfers work best on a slick, hard, non-porous background. So I'm using today a repurposed palette, a wood palette that I my husband and I assemble. Let me show you what it looks like. Ruby says to say hello. Hello, Ruby. Um, so these are, I love the character of old palettes. So we put together the boards and, you know, some sticks for stability. And then I painted with a kind of an off-white, chalk style paint, which is quite porous and transfers like non-porous. So once I painted that up in kind of a just dry brush way so that some of the wood patterning shows through, I sealed it with a coat of poly acrylic. So then it became non-porous and smooth. So a transfer right out of the package, right, is going to fit perfectly if your substrate is the exact same size as the transfer is, but that doesn't happen a whole lot of times. So I wanted to play around here today with fixing up this charcuterie so it's going to fit on my board. So my husband, Joe, who's monitoring comments here. Andrea from North Carolina is to say hello. Hello, Andrea. Um, we put the, the pallet board together and I decided I definitely wanted the boards to run 
in this horizontal way. And in doing that, it's like the whole transfer won't fit. I definitely want the pig to be in the middle though. So I've cut apart a lot of these pieces that could get added back in. But if you see, the whole thing across wouldn't fit. So we have, I don't even know what that means, ballotines, pates, and confit. So I'm thinking I'm going to cut out pates. I'm going to add and confit. And this scrolly stuff that I cut away, maybe some of it can be added back in on the edge, but I cut that away so that I'm going to make things fit across the top. I definitely want bacon to be part of this. So I'm going to sacrifice ham because it wouldn't fit all the way. So it's going to say, where are we here? It's going to say sausages, terrines, and probably bacon over there. So what I did to make this work out is worked from the center of, so the center of this is right here where it says terrines. So that has to line up and I cut away the edges so that I can fit the words on here so they look really nice on here and they still make sense. So it's gonna say bacon, we're gonna leave out the ham and the pate, and I don't know, that's gonna find a place on some other work. So that's part of the process here, right? Is to lay out the pieces and see what's going to fit. I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna move this a little bit. So here we've got the G that's almost coming off. So I, I trimmed away all these parts. Some of them could be added back in a la carte, but for now that fits there. It's gonna, it's gonna fit on the board. I did not trim this one yet. I thought we would do that together. So this is the, I don't know, the hind part of the pig, the lower hind part. I don't know what you call that in pig talk, but this guy's gonna go here and you see that it hangs off the edge. There's no room for this design. And you can see over here that I've already cut it away. So I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and trim this up in a way that makes sense for the artwork, right? So here I'm not paying attention to the grid lines as much as I'm paying attention to the design. So I'm gonna come across like I did on this side, I'm gonna follow this grid line to get a nice straight cut here. And I'm gonna cut across this way and cut off these parts that there's not room for. They were hanging off the side. So this is gone in a way that gives me a nice clean line here still. And I'm gonna lay that back and try to assess where it's gonna go here. So I've got that part. And that's all gonna be there. This will fit. We just had to cut off the corners in that one edge. So we're that far along. So that's a way to play with the pieces to get them to fit, right? Now we're gonna talk about adding color. There's so many ways. One of the ways I love to add some color is underneath before I apply the transfer. And you see why is that the colors underneath and then the transfer itself stays really dark and black and isn't uh, going to you know, lose its vibrance, I guess. So I like to paint with anything that's opaque, like a chalk paint, put that underneath, then put on the transfer, and then we can fine tune it with something 
transparent like a watercolor or a very watery mix of something. So. Now you get some more people watching, honey. Sue and Cindy, your team, Cheryl Hurley. Well, hey guys, Cheryl Hurley's watching. Hi, Cheryl Hurley. I'm sure you're watching from Florida where it's not as cold and rainy. So I'm going to put this guy back down. I did some of this the other day. So we line it where it's gonna fit, right? And you know with transfers that you don't want to take off the backing sheet until it's time. So what I did, I used to uh, sew quite a bit. So if you can see this is dressmaker's tissue so you can make patterns. I lined this out over the, the pig when I had it to full size and I just traced it with a pencil. So I traced around the, the pig and I traced around this, to me it looks like a sheaf of wheat or something. I don't know, it's weedy, which is why I colored it in in a gold. So I used the dressmaker's tissue to trace those two images that I want to colorize. Once I got that traced, I, let me see the one I traced. It's under here somewhere. Here it is. Here's the image that's already traced. So I placed it where it should go on this board, like so. And then I used, this is, do we have any questions or anything, Joe? This is um, no question. graphite paper. I picked it up at, I don't know, Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Amazon, any place like that that sells, um, art supplies, you can get some graphite tracing paper, similar to carbon paper, but not as messy. I mean, I can touch this and it doesn't get all over my fingers. So I, know I laid the graphite under the tissue. I got the pig lined up. And I find that lining up key elements like the ears, can you see, nope, you can't, you can move that over. The ears right here, or the snout. If I get that in the right place, I can then grab a pen, because I've got the graphite paper underneath here. I can grab a pen, or I can grab any kind of a stylus, because what, what's transferring now is the graphite, right? So if I come on here and I put the rest of the, outline shape of the pig and his hind legs and his belly and over here the wheat stuff. I did it the other day so you don't have to watch me do all of that but you see how that happens. I hope you can see that. I'm going to bring it up a little bit closer. So I've just transferred these lines. There's the pig's curly tail and the wheat indications over here. So those are good enough. I like to leave some things to chance and that's what makes the perfectly imperfect kind of art that I enjoy. So I'm gonna take out a little bit of pink paint and just put it where I outlined those the basic shape of the pig. So pigs are not this sweetly pink, but they're pretty pink. And I'm gonna just put on the curly Q tail. Says that's a great trick for color. Well, I find mm -hmm. it really makes a huge difference to go underneath the transfer. It just keeps the transfer nice and crisp and very dark. 
So I'm putting this on and it's pretty sweet and pastel -y pink. And if, you know, later it doesn't line up exactly, we can touch up with some of the off-white paint. There's a lot of different things we can do. I'm gonna put a little bit of this, it's called a uh, black walnut glaze, just because pigs are not that clean and sweetly pink. They're a little bit dirtier pink. So just a little bit of that inside of here. And we're not making it perfect. There'll be other stuff added later on, but now the pig isn't, doesn't look like it's her first day in the barnyard, you know? She's got some color there. So that's that. That's all I do for coloring the pig for now. The, the back of the feet are on there. I've got um, I've got enough of that. I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm going to grab some yellowish paint. So this one, could you open that, please? See if we could get that one opened. And if not, I I have another one. I have another shade of a gold for our wheat over here. And you see it's just loosely kind of marked in a general area of where it is. So I'm gonna take some of this gold and loosely put it in here where the wheat is indicated. So just putting some on here. I just want a little bit of color underneath the transfer. It's not gonna line up perfectly for this because, well, because it's because it's just not. And that's okay. I have a little bit of a golden glaze to it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on top of this because that paper is still there. And just add a little bit of this. Can you guys see that? I don't know if it's close enough, but just throw it in some of that gold, mixing the colors a little so it's not just a flat. And there that is. And we're going to need to let that dry a little bit. Anybody have questions? I'm going to try to zoom in. I don't know if I can. Nope, no zooming in, so I have to lift up. Here's what we have. Um, nope, too close, Joe. Joe's helping, but he can't see the image. But here's the pig, here's the curly tail. Here is where I put the wheat, and you see it's just push, push the colors of gold and lighter gold. And we're gonna let that dry. And while those are drying, I'm just gonna chat. I'm gonna talk your ears off while I rub the rest of this transfer on. And I'm hoping y'all will ask a question or two. Um, have any of you guys colorized the paintable transfers? And if you did, what did you use? I mean, you definitely can also paint on the top of them. And I'm gonna do a little bit of that with watercolor. I'm gonna rub these. I'm gonna put these on while our paint dries. So here's our, our standard practice for applying transfers, right? You get a sealed surface. You use the rubbing tool that comes in the transfer pad and you just rub until the ink comes off the one and moves on to the other. So I'm gonna put that on. And remember this side now has been painted and sealed with the polycrylic. So it's, even though the wood is rough because it's a repurposed palette, it's also smooth because of the addition of the polyacrylic. It goes on pretty well. So there's that part. Gracie just joined us. Hey, Gracie. Um, I'm gonna.
Do the same down here. We're going to rub on the rest of the words on the base. Get that paint off of there that I put on. Somebody wants to know if it's a coloring trick to use to decoupage. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, there's rules of thumb. I, don't, I like to think any any rule in the arts and crafts world is definitely more of a suggestion than a hard and fast rule. And although we're not decoupaging today, yes, the same kind of, um, I used one of the beautiful papers I have for decoupage that was um, misty mountains that were very gray, shades of gray, but there was an image of the moon at the top of this particular paper. So I painted most of my substrate, I painted white like we usually do with decoupage, right? You paint it white so the colors will be bright and shine through. But underneath this moon, I wanted a glow similar to this gold over here. So yes, you can definitely underpaint a decoupage. It's not, this is decoupage 203, not 101. Decoupage 101, right, involves painting stuff white and then trying to get it on with, without an excess of wrinkles. Once you, once you master those tricks, you can move on to um, the adding color sometimes in different areas. So definitely, it's a, it's a, it's a trick, it's a tool or technique that you can use underneath decoupage to the same kind of effect. So you're not covering up the decoupage paper, you're just giving some color underneath it. So it's coming off better in some places than others. That's fairly typical. Try to get a little bit of air sometimes, just a little underneath. Somehow that makes it come off more easily. I see the paint is drying pretty well. So we're going to let that keep drying. And I'm going to keep on rubbing the transfer onto this kind of rough and tumble board. Just taking a peek, see if it gets lifting. It needs more right here. So as you do, you want to, you know, keep the keep the transfer in one spot so it doesn't slide around on you too much. And just rub until all that ink comes off. I think we've got it off the bottom one. Got a few more letters up here to get. I think we got it. Yes, we did. We had a little bit of this S that wiggled off. So I'm just going to line it back up. And there it is. So that this side is pretty well done for the basics, except for the, the trim work that I cut away. So we're gonna add that back in as it fits. But while, before we do that, let's see if this is dry. Not quite, almost. That guy's dry. So I'm just gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna do this. Didn't think to bring a blow dryer home from the shop. But we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, try to get it dry, add a little polycrylic on top over here, and we're gonna let that dry while. Joe, I think I left the sealer in the screen porch. Would you mind grabbing it? It's just a can from the hardware store. Oh, 
that's the one. So this time for this purpose, I'm using just, as you probably uh, know this can, I think it's Minwax the brand isn't important. What's important is that it be a water-based sealer. I'm gonna use this over the gold, which is dry already. And I have sealed the rest of it. So the rest that I had painted white is already sealed and dry. I am gonna go over the, the pink of the pig here, even though some of it might be a little wet. I don't know, this isn't best practice, guys. You should make sure your paint is thoroughly dry before you apply the top coat. But sometimes in live videos, we don't do best practice. So it's a do as we say, not as we show sometimes with live videos. So as that part is, is drying, I want to return my attention right to this other side where I cut away the words. So now we have this. Do you know, Joe, what a ballotine is? No, I do not. I mean, I think I've heard of all the other stuff. We have terrines. So I don't know if that means soup, but it's some kind of a, no, I think it's a, a molded meat. I don't know. A pate, that's like liverwurst, but fancy. Um, confit, don't know what that is either. So I'm cutting away the pate anyway, because these words wouldn't fit all the way across. So pate and ham are going into the recycled transfer pile. We're going to have ballotines, whatever they are. Anybody watching know what that means? Or could you Google it and tell us? <laughs> Confit. What is that, Joe? Could you look that up? Confit, a ballotine. We can learn new words while we wait for the paint to dry. So here's our confit, trying to make that straight across. Just rub that guy down. So we have ballotines, B-A-L-L-O-T-I-N-E-S. What does that mean, Joe? They don't want scotch whiskey. Ballotines? <laughs> That's one of them. Huh, single malt scotch whiskey. Well, that's not what I expected. <laughs> it's a Scotch, Scottish whiskey. All right, how about confit, C-O-N-F-I-T? What is that? So now we have the ballotines in confit, right? And I'm going to take these edge pieces that I cut away and I'm gonna use part of them to adorn the top corner there. So I'm gonna cut a little bit randomly here because you know, we cut them, we can put them back together again. See how this fits up here? Pretty good. Did you get a confit, Joe? Confit is a type of food that is cooked slowly over a long period as a method of preservation. All right, confit, cooked slowly as a method of conservation. Preservation. Preservation. I'm gonna cut a little bit away where this T is. I might add it back in, try to get it onto it. But the T is more important than the squiggle to me. I, I, I wanna preserve the T. I can add lines if I need to. So, here we go, right there. So I don't know if you saw that, but I just cut a little piece out of that transfer. So it looks like it's going behind the letter T. Um, this guy, is in a crevice. So I'm gonna cut right here. So do these things with your transfers 
when you're working on a you know less than a hundred percent smooth just the right size kind of a background we have to cut them up we have to reconfigure them sometimes to get that aesthetic that we're looking for so rubbing these embellishments back onto the corners so i took them off because they wouldn't fit as originally designed they weren't going to fit on this particular shape and size of board but i love the embellishment so i do want to include them so i'm just making them work along the edges so there you can see how that came out yes so you can see it goes around the letter t but it fancied up the corner of our board here i think it's going to be a bit for these to dry um what time do we have 11 30. it's 11 30. so these are going to dry and when they're dry I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I mean, applying the transfer is basic stuff. Um, so when it's dry, I will pick up the backing paper and line this one up. And we're going to end up here with the same area. Looking for some adornment later, right? So this will go over the back side of the pig. This will go over the top back side of the pig. And they're fitting on there nicely now because I took off those, these pieces. So we can add back in on the top. Let's do, because this board's dry. So I'm going to, cut away use the grid lines this time and i'm just going to cut the words terrines and sausages did you look up terrines joe would you t-e-r-r-i-n-e-s terrines t-e-r So that lines up with that and that. That's where that guy's going to go. Terrines are T E R R I N E. Terrine. I know. I know it's like a a bowl that you put a soup in, but what? What is it? Fish, a vegetable mixture that has been cooked. A meat, fish, or vegetable mixture that has Being been used for green, play of an oblong shape made of green. Yeah, like a casserole dish. <laughs> All right, a terrine. That's what a terrine is. It's it's the container and the food, I guess. It's it holds the casserole, it holds the meat and veggies, and it is the meat and veggies. So it says sausages, terrines, valatines, which now we know are whiskey. Snuck that one in on us. And there's sausages, and I did not want to, I'm sacrificing ham for bacon. Wasn't enough when we can't use them as they are in the package. We modify them, right? That's what we do, we're creatives. So we make it work. I'm gonna just see where that should go here. Space-wise, I think it goes right here. Looks good to me. We got our bacon back. No ham, no pate, but we have bacon, sausages, terrines, whiskey, and confit, I don't remember what that was again already. I forget what confit was. 
There's our bacon. I saved our bacon and lost our ham. There's the comma. So there's that. Now, while we're on camera, I'm probably not going to get to finish this part. But you know, I'm going to do the same thing I did over here. And when it's all nice and dry, I will apply the transfer pieces back on. But I want to show you the second thing for coloring, right? So we've got the basic pink color of our pig that we laid down first. Then we sealed, then we did the transfer. I'm using some watercolors because they're very transparent, right? So if I go over the black, it doesn't even show. So I can paint right over that black and now it isn't dulling it. It's, it looks good. So I can just punch up these colors by adding a little bit of watercolor. I can dirty them with the addition of some of this yellow. I can deepen some of the pink by adding some more pink here where we have the wheat coming. I'm using some of these golden. And why didn't I just do that in the first place? Well, because it doesn't give, see if I only use that, I don't know. It's just not very satisfying to me. It doesn't have that depth of color that I want it to have. So the, the first layer gives the depth. And then this is kind of just deepening it in some areas, but because it's transparent, it is not muffling that beautiful black, soft black transfer. So I'm adding transparent watercolor washes to this area now too. So that's kind of it, you guys. What time do we have? It is 11.37. Um, I always like to kind of do a rehash. So let me bring that up a bit. So what we have for our rehash, I'm gonna switch up to, here's the palette substrate that Joe and I made the other day. We, Joe took all the palettes apart, God bless him. And, uh, then we got them cut so they were uniform size around the size of this pig transfer, um, but it wasn't perfect. And you're gonna find that a lot that you won't have an exact fit of your transfer onto your furniture piece or your backboard or whatever you're using. So you have to modify the transfer a bit. So we did that, right? We cut off, we left out the the ham and the pate and shortened up the, the list of words. We cut off some of the embellishments on the edges and then we're gonna add those back in again now. But the biggest things that I, I wanted to convey today was that process of putting the, you know, sizing it and placing it on your board tracing so you can use tracing paper you can use uh, like a clear acrylic sheet or something but tracing the basic outline of in this case the pig and the wheat using a transfer medium like you know carbon paper um i used graphite from the art supply store this graphite paper and just got the basic line. You only need the outer edge. I applied like a chalk style paint to give depth of color. This is an opaque medium. So I put that on the pink pig and the gold and then sealed it up. When it's all dry, we get to apply the rest of the transfer and add back those embellishments along the edges so 
It's not too plain and simple. You know, cut away the little bits. So this looks like it's going behind that letter T. You get to decide how your project's gonna look, right? Um, I did not do any underpainting down in this area, but this is kind of a leafy green thing. I'm gonna grab a brush and a little bit of green watercolor, transparent watercolor, and just add the littlest hint of green under here. It's just a little, like you probably can't even see that. But if I come up, let's see, where's the, let me put a little bit like right here, just a little bit of green. And can you see the very subtle addition of that color? And because it's watercolor and transparent, it's not blocking the black of the transfer. So I think that's pretty cool. So that's all I'm gonna do with this greenery is just that little bit of color. So do we have any last minute questions? I'm gonna finish this board up. I'm gonna add some more color. Please say hello. Um, it, it really helps us when we have a little bit of interaction with our, uh, with our viewers. Um, so I hope that you learned something a little bit today. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, I totally think of IOD tools or IOD products as artistic tools that we get to use and shape to make, you know, what, what we want to make. It's not a cookie cutter kind of a product. It's very, what's the word, customizable. You, you make it be what you want it to be. So thank you for joining me today. I'm Liz. Liza Jane Designs in the Twin Cities area in Minnesota, right on the St. Croix River. If you're in this neck of the woods, please come see me in Afton. And if you're not in this neck of the woods, please find a local stockist, someone near you who you, know, you can work with and do projects together and get advice. I love being a stockist and I know whoever's near you doing this loves being a stockist too. So thank you for joining me. If you watch it on the replay, say hello. I will go back and check for questions. Love you guys. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.